Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube NFL segment I'm going to be dissertating and talking about the 2013 NFC North preview. Okay people, don't be too flabbergasted. First place I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers at 11 and 5. You know, something very paradoxical about this team. In 2011 they went 15 and 1. They were last in total defense. Um, 2012, they go 11 and 5. They're 11th in total defense. The offense was still very volatile and explosive. They did put up a good amount of points, at, but their record was, you know, not quite indicative of that. Perhaps, um, you know, maybe things were a little bit, you know, fortuitous for them in 2011, because eight of their 15 wins were by 10 points or fewer. Um, Aaron Rodgers and um, you know, we have Aaron Rodgers and outside linebacker Clay Matthews. This team will still be a team to be reckoned with in 2013. Um, place kicker um, Mason Crosby is coming off an abhorrent season. He only converted on 64% of his field goals. Uh, but this is still, you know, you know, by default, I believe it is the Packers' division um, to lose. Um, they need to improve on their run defense, which was right near the middle of the pack at 17th at 118.5 yards per game. And really their, um, you know, their run defense, you know, was basically obliterated. In, the, in their last two playoff losses, they gave, have given up over 400 yards on the ground, 418 to be precise, in the losses to, um, to the 49ers and the, and the New York Giants in the last two see uh, playoff um, losses so that is one thing that they are you know going to try you know improve on and hopefully they'll be a little bit better in that in that department uh, this season so anyway I will go with the Packers once again 11 and 5 first place and um, second place I'm going to go with um, Minnesota Vikings at 9 and 7 um, Adrian Peterson is coming off a phenomenal season in which he um, had 2,097 yards rushing, 2,314 all-purpose yards. I mean, he was obviously the dominant person and focal point of the Minnesota Vikings offense. Um, linebacker um, Chad Green um, Wag was second in the league in um, tackles at 148. A lot of that was um, overshadowed by you know Peterson and you know what he did on offense. But he did have, um, but Green um, Greenway did have. Um, I believe I'm saying Greenway or Greenway. He had a very good season, and um, the team was 31st in passing um, passing yards last season. So um, Christian Ponder is going to have to evolve and improve on his game. I believe if Minnesota has a shot at making the postseason um, this season. So Peterson accounted for 43% roughly of the offense last season. The top receiver in receptions on um, Percy Harvin. Um, had 62, and uh, as a team collectively, they were 24th in receptions with 300. Um, with 300, and you know that will have to improve this season if they have, you know, I think in order to enhance their chances of making the playoffs. Um, the team did good as far as their um, kickoff return yardage. I mean, they were um, they were ninth in the league. Uh, the defense. You know, um, may have to get a little bit better. They're, they were 24th in pass defense, and they allowed 21.8 points per game, which is about average. So, you know, this is a team, you know, which is very, it's very good. It's obviously, in my mind, at least, it's not great. It has a 50-50 chance, maybe, of making the postseason um, this year, and. You know, they're going to have to go through, you know, somewhat grueling schedule in order to do this. And I don't know if they can make it on, you know, this, you know, this season. But I do look for the Vikings to at least, you know, be competitive this season. I'm going to go uh, third place, Chicago Bears at 7-9. and nine. And um, the Bears last season started on a rampage. They started off 7-1. and one, And, um, however, their last eight games... They went three and five, and they missed out on the postseason. Consequently, um, some questions do um, surround the Bears this season. 
can Jay Cutler, uh, quarterback for the Bears, can he be adaptable in making the transition to a faster pace offense? They lost a polarizing um, linebacker, Brian Erlocker, in the offseason. Team did finish fifth in total defense. They were third in scoring defense. Um, cornerback Tim Jennings leads the way in the secondary. He led the NFL with nine INTs last season. And, you know, the team um, had led the, um, or the team was right up there in INTs with, um, with um, 24 uh, last season. And obviously, they, this is a very formidable secondary. So even without Erlocker, the team still should be competitive in that, you know, as far as the pass defense goes. And uh, special teams, um, I'm going to say that um, coordinator um, Joe um, DeCamely, his name is DeCamely, you know, gives this team, or, or De, uh, DeCamely gives this team, um, you know, instant credibility. And, you know, they will be, I believe, you know, as far as the special teams go, they will be adequate. And... Um, but Cutler, um, Jay Cutler, the quarterback, you know, you know, he's somebody that's good, maybe not great, someone that maybe hasn't uh, quite reached his potential. Uh, he was 20, um, fourth in yards thrown last year and only 21st in completion percentage at 58.8. And obviously that will have to be improved upon in order for, you know, maybe the Bears to, you know, have any shot at a playoff berth this season. So, you know, the Bears have lost some people in the offseason. It's a season where it's going to be a transition and transformation on this team for them to establish and maybe perhaps a new identity. And that's why I don't really like their prospects of really making the postseason. Again, Bears in third place at 7-9. and nine. Last but not least, I got the Detroit Lions at 7-9. and nine. After a stellar 2011 campaign in which they, um, you know, went 10 and 6, and um, you know, looked like they were a team that was on the rise, they plummeted to 4 and 12 in 2011, uh, 2012. You know, is this really maybe the team that we thought the Detroit Lions were? Um, quarterback Matthew Stafford, his stats diminished, in, a number of them diminished in 2012. On the um, I'm going to say on his touchdown passes, most noticeably, he went from 41 in 2011 to 20 touchdown passes in 2012. Through 17 interceptions, he had six fumbles. You know, it was a good but not great campaign for, uh, for Stafford, and he's obviously going to have to escalate his game this season in order for Detroit, you know, to be, you know, at least, you know, mediocre or competitive in, you know, in this division. And, um, one thing um, to say for Detroit, you know, you know, maybe they, it was somewhat not non-providential for them last season. They had nine losses by eight points or fewer, so that's essentially one score or fewer they lost by, and, and it was in, in including um, an overtime game to the Tennessee Titans early in the season. Um, they acquired running back Reggie Bush um, in the offseason, and maybe he could augment, you know, somewhat you know, a poor uh, running attack, maybe that will help them in that department. It will, and Matthew Stafford ha ha won't have to throw over 700 uh, passes like he did last season. They take a little bit of the pressure off of him and maybe have, you know, incorporate a little more of a running game into this team and might help them out a little bit. Um, they do face a grueling schedule down the stretch. Six of their final eight games are going to be against teams that finished 500 or better in 2012. So that's going to be, you know, a key of the how can they hold the fort down that stretch and be able to be competitive in those final eight games. Uh, their defense, um, you know, as far as their um, secondary was not good last season. They they had 11 INTs as a team, and that was tied for fourth worst in the league. Um, they were 27th in scoring defense at 27.3. Um, uh, points per game scored against them. So, you know, that was one thing in which they emphasized in the offseason and try to enhance on their, you know, on just their defense, um, not just in general, but really the, you know, the secondary. They, um,
you know, they drafted, you know, they got somebody in the first round, number five pick, um, and he will, you know, for defensive end, um, Ezekiel, I believe his name is, um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, um, Anish, um, he's going to be, you know, defensive end, and he was drafted in the first round, I believe, somewhere near number five pick overall, and somebody that is very um, rugged, um, durable, versatile, uh, you know, and he might be able to be, you know, possibly, you know, could, you know, be a, a dominant player for this team as far as the pass defense and secondary goes. So we'll have to, um, you know, see how that, um, how that pans out and, you know, as uh, time will be the determining factor as far as that goes. So, um, anyway, people, that is going to be it for my 2013 NFC North preview and let me just give you my um, rundown again I'm on a very frugal budget here as far as my videotaping goes and I'm going to kind of walk my camera over here and we're going to look at the picks one more time I'm going to show it to you we're going to go with the Green Bay Packers first place 11 and 5 Minnesota Vikings second at 9 and 7 and then the Chicago Bears at 7 and 9 followed by the Detroit Lions with the identical record losing the tiebreaker at 7 and 9 and my next video I'm going to be previewing the 2013 NFC South and until next time people stay well